So the next exercise that we're going to be working on is using techniques like hatching, cross-hatching, and stippling with the crow quill pen and applying them to a three-dimensional form. So we're going to have to think about the direction that our marks of our textures are going to go in to describe the form. We're also going to have to think about how the textures are going to reflect the values of each of the different sides of the cube. So to start, we're going to work with hatching, which is the most simple technique, I think. And we're going to use the crow quill pen. I am going to use the more rigid nib to start. Make sure that you have some scrap paper nearby when you start to do your cubes. You want to make sure that you test out your pen before you start. We're going to start with some really close hatching for the darkest side of the cube. The hatching is going to run parallel to the top and bottom edges of this side of the cube. Your line should be about the thickness of the line apart. Make sure that they don't touch. Try to keep them parallel and consistent. If you need to at the end, you can touch up the edges, but you want the edge of each line to really line up with the left and the right side of this side of the cube. This is the darkest value. The top is going to be the middle value. Here you're going to run the lines almost perpendicular to the other set of lines that you just did for the darkest side. You're also going to space the lines apart. So this is going to make it a middle value and also change the direction of the line. The front is going to be the lightest value. Here the lines are going to run vertical, so it contrasts with both of the sides that you've already drawn. You want to space the lines out further apart. Here you want to make sure that there's a line all the way to the right edge. If you want to outline your cube at the end, you can. You don't have to. Sometimes it's nice to just let a texture kind of run up to the edge of where the form ends. The last step is going to be to add a cast shadow. For the cast shadow, I just place lines to figure out where the edges of the shadows are going to go, and I try to keep them closer together or closer to the form, and then they can fade out as they get further away from the form to kind of show how a cast shadow starts to fade out. You want to think about the shape of the shadow as it were being cast on the ground. The next is going to be cross-hatching. Cross-hatching is going to be like hatching, only the lines are going to be further apart and we're going to do multiple sets of lines. So these hatched lines, again, are parallel with the top and bottom of the right side of the cube. This is going to be the darkest side. Next, I'm going to run some lines that cross over top of this initial hatching. These lines are going to be vertical. These are going to be spaced apart about the same amount as I spaced the first set of lines apart. Lastly, I'm going to put a third set of lines over top that are a diagonal. Same spacing. Here you have to be careful with this paper because this paper gets really soft as it gets saturated with ink, so just be careful not to tear the paper. The top is going to be the middle value again. Here the lines are going to get spaced out further apart, and there's only going to be two sets of hatched lines. The first being horizontal, the second being parallel to the other two edges. The contrast is mostly created by the spacing in the lines to make the middle value, and also that there's only two sets of lines. The front is also going to have two sets of lines. These lines are going to be spaced further apart. The first set of lines is going to be horizontal. The second set of lines is going to be vertical. Here you will want to make sure that there are lines that line up with the edge of the form. Lastly is the cast shadow. The cast shadow is going to have three sets of lines. The first set of lines is going to run the whole spacing of the cast shadow. The lines can fade out as they get a little bit further from the form, meaning they're spread out. The second set of lines is going to cross over those lines, and then the third set is really only going to be right against the form to show the darkest part of the cast shadow. And this is your cross-hatching cube. The last cube is stippled. Practice your stippling before you start, just to make sure that the ink is flowing out of the pen. The stippling is going to be closest on the right-hand side. You're going to put a lot of dots there. Make sure that there are dots that run right up to the edge of that side. The top is going to be the middle value. Here, less dots, more spread apart. Front is going to be the lightest value. Here, you're going to spread your dots out more. Make sure there's enough dots on the edges to show the edge of the cube. Last is your cast shadow. The cast shadow is going to get a lot of dots. Closest to the form, you want there to be more dots so it's a darker value than the right-hand side 
of the cube.